you know what? We start the scoop, and usually you'll hear two specific words. Good morning. Occasionally, <laughs> you get some words. Good afternoon. We're almost in the realm where we can go good evening. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is the first time we've ever been so late with the show. I've dropped my pen. Welcome back. Hey, how are you doing? How are we all doing? How are you all doing? Good evening. Welcome into twitch.tv forward slash I know you're not used to seeing us live at this time. Well, you are kind of used to seeing us live at this time. Three o'clock is not a strange time for Ice Cream Uploads. For the last 18 months or so, you'd have seen a lot of content going out at 3, 3.15. It's 3.16 in the UK, not Stone Cold Steve Austin time. <laughs> um, so yeah, you will have seen a lot of streams at this time, but not for a while. Not for the last month, two months, whatever it is. We've gone back to uh, um, a, a more traditional working environment sort of schedule. So we do the scoop in the morning, and then we do evening streams and weekend streams. Nice, nice. Um, but this is different. We don't usually go live at 3.15, uh, and it's all Bibby's fault. God damn it, Bib. I uh, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <clears throat> if, if you're in the chat, please do feel free to let us know that you're in the chat. We don't usually go live at 3.15, so so we we hopefully hopefully we'll get some new faces, some new names, maybe some people that can't join us all the time. We know there's a lot of you guys that do join us on demand because you can't join us at 10 o'clock in the morning because you've got jobs, it's fine. You've got, you've got lives to live. Mm -hmm. uh, well, hopefully, the convenience of us being a little bit late today, uh, the inconvenience of us being a bit late today is a bit more convenient for you guys and you can join us. So if you are, do feel free to get involved. Um... By the time this finishes, you'll be going live with your PUBG stream. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Uh, so a reminder for those that don't know, we do stream seven days a week. That's not bad for a part-time channel. Uh, we stream seven days a week, every week. 10 o'clock-ish, and this is evidence of the ish. We stream at 10 o'clock-ish each and every single weekday on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Monday to Friday is the scoop at 10 a.m.-ish, obviously. 17 minutes past three. There's a little old-ish in there. Uh, oh! Oh, and you were toy year. Why, why, why? Can I play a a a a? Moist, moist, <laughs> moister than an oyster. Sumptuous substacles capper. <laughs> New toy, can I play? Moist, moister than an oyster. Nice, my camera's <laughs> giving up. Uh, uh, sumptuous substacles capper. Thank you very much, Lotus, for the four-month sub. Speaking of which, speaking of which, I was just about to mention Mr. I Lotus UK with a DMR spray mm -hmm. um, because we do stream seven days a week, 10 o'clock-ish in the morning for the scoop, Monday to Friday. That's the the daily news show throughout the week. We will give you all the biggest, the best, and breaking stories from the world of video games and the scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast. On a Saturday, though, we change the pace up. We play some PUBG. And then on a Sunday, we change the pace again. We play some Skyrim. And if, if you can't join us at 10 o'clock in the morning throughout the week or in the weekend, we also throw in evening streams on a Wednesday night tonight. I am joined by iLotus UK himself uh, as we will be playing some deadly duos. Myself and Lotus, as we have been doing for the past month or so now, uh, we'll be playing uh, some PUBG. We'll be venturing out into the battlegrounds for your viewing pleasure. Still chasing our first duos win, I think, by the way. But, you know, great, greatness, greatness awaits. Greatness, not, not last week, greatness awaits. Well, you've, not, you've not won a game together yet. Um, we might have done in the first week. We've won, like, we've we've thrown in some squads and we've won. I think technically as duos, we haven't. But we, we, we kind of mess about, so. So some people yeah. are full on sweat modes, whereas, yeah, I mean, for the last, I mean, you, you'll hear me going to Lotus. I've been running like a micro Uzi. I really should be picking up an assault rifle at this point. Because and he's like, it's all right. We don't need any wins. We're playing it. We're playing it for the content, not for the wins. It's like, yeah, yeah. So um, style. Oh no, there we go. We have won a game as a duo. There we go. There you go. There you go. It's just it's just been a couple of weeks. That's all. Um, oh yeah, there you go, Tego. I picked you up and shot the last guy. He, yes, I remember. I'd been downed. Lotus picked me up, dropped me over his shoulders, and then murdered the last guy with me on his shoulders. There we are. God, it's, I'm just, it's just, just. I'm not bothered about the wins. Some people care about the wins. I mean, it says the man who's saying that he's not got any wins, but still, some people care so much about the wins. That's all they play for. As long as we're having fun, getting some good games in, saying new toys, can I play? As we go through and other movie quotes. That's Robocop, by the way. If you don't know, if you don't know. They did see yourself out. So nice, nice. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's content over victories. Nice. Uh, so yes, tonight I will be playing PUBG with Lotus. Tomorrow, though, Thursday night, six thirty ish on Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Plus. Bibi will give you your second of three fixes of Skyrim on the channel this week as well. So do make sure you join us tonight at six thirty for PUBG. Tomorrow night, six thirty for some Skyrim. 
Yeah. Before all of that, though, should we talk about some video games? I think that's what we should do. I think that's what we should do. So if you don't know who we are, what this is, you're thinking, why are these guys live on Twitch at 20 past three? These guys never stream at 20 past three. Well, we don't. We do stream five days a week, though, usually at 10 a.m., ish um on twitch.tv forward slash i scream uploads uh, we do work in the video games industry so there is a big ish on, on that 10 a.m sometimes it's 11 sometimes it's 12 ish this is the latest we've ever been though do you know what personal things going on personal things going on don't know whether big wants to say so i'm not going to push him to say it but basically he's, he's got a bad rash and he needs some creams uh but other than that is that's not what it is that's not what it is but uh but yeah was, yeah yeah all right all right calm down calm down See, Wes getting all Larry in the chat. What is this? Latest ever. God. <laughs> all right, lads. Yeah, calm down. Uh, so, yeah, we do go live at 10 a.m. ish with a scoop. The UK's number one video game podcast. If we do say so ourselves, we will bring you the biggest, the best, and breaking stories in the world of video games. And then we will give you our thoughts and impressions. We also want your thoughts and impressions. We then want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's kind of how this works. So, if you're in the chat, please do feel free to get involved. Because even though we go live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. ish. <gasps> We also turn it into a podcast, a video podcast on YouTube and an audio podcast on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play. There is tons of people that watch and listen to this podcast on demand, over 105,000 of them. So please do get involved over the next hour or so as we are live on Twitch. I'll read, Bib. Good morning, Graham. Oh, sorry. No, no, we're not in the morning anymore. It's uh, good evening, Graham. Good evening. Good evening. The first ever evening-ish. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, what, what time does the afternoon become the evening? Is it like after four-ish? Because if that's the case, then by the time we wrap this up, we will be uh, evening territory. So I'm not sure, you know, because it starts to go dark at like quarter to four, like half three, quarter to four. So officially, I think I would class evening as like five o'clock onwards. But I think when it gets to winter, it's like two o'clock. In my opinion. Yeah, you're pretty much right. So so usually we finish up the stream in the evening anyway, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yikes. Pretty much. <laughs> um, you doing a Game Awards watch along, by the way, says Ads. Good question. Good question. Unsure at this point in time. Potentially. Potentially. Um, uh, Doctor, good eve and afternooning. Well, somewhere around that, that afternoon, evening kind of thing. You need to troll people with gasoline, etc., uh, and run off with teammates. Oh, I always pick up teammates that are down. Like if I can, if I can run away with someone, I always. Unless it's unless it's like they're too far and I'm going to die getting it. If there's someone there, they are getting carried. Uh, gas, yeah, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I've always got the gas. Is that not what you meant? No, okay. Um, I always care. Full bore sweat fest says Lotus. Goddamn right. West, how was the stream earlier? How did you get on? Um, uh, asking why Bibby's playing Skyrim tomorrow, not FIFA. He says, Bib didn't pack the players he wanted on FIFA, question mark? Exactly that. Correct. Correct. Uh, uh, very good question, actually. Um, I imagine I'll probably get this a lot tomorrow, I think, when people expect me to be playing FIFA. But I haven't played FIFA that often recently because we've got Skyrim. Um, and I feel like I am I am lagging behind now. I need What I need to do is catch up. So I'd need to play like, I don't know, 30 games um, to try and get some packs and stuff like that to open up because I'm not doing any of the objectives. Therefore, I am only running gold cards. So I am lagging behind on that. And if anyone's actually seen any of the gameplay or played it themselves for the last week, I think you'll probably understand why I'm not playing it because it's not. It's been sped up too fast for me. I loved the, the FIFA at the beginning was very pezzish. And that is perfect for me because I don't like fast build up in, in in the football games. It's just you're putting Street Fighter combinations together now to try and beat but a man, and that's not me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I feel like I'm I'm not I'm not playing it every single day like you're supposed to do to try and keep up with the meta. I am falling behind. Plus, if anyone watched the Skyrim stream last night, which I know a lot of you in this chat did, you'll see we're having too much of a fun time over there saving the world. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's exactly what we're going to be playing for this foreseeable. I think. Yeah, I mean, what Bibby just... If you if you didn't catch that whole conversation, I'll give it you quite short. What Bibby's trying to say is FIFA's not quite as good as he as he wants it to be right now. That's 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 just a cover story. What he means is man's properly addicted to Skyrim, innit? <laughs> yeah, and there isn't enough time in the day. Like, If you could survive on like two hours, three hours sleep, that'd be fantastic, but I genuinely can't. I would just love to play more Skyrim, like Skyrim all day, like 24 hours of Skyrim and then still be able to get eight hours of sleep during that a 36 hour day that would be fantastic but you can't have that so oh, that's, that's, that's me with PUBG 
<laughs> there's just not enough time in the day yeah. it's a joke yeah anyway uh, do you know what there's not enough time in the day so we will have to move things forward let me tell you about the stories that we have on today's show if you haven't seen our tweets already why haven't you if you haven't seen our Instagram post our reel our story on Facebook if you haven't seen any of that stuff why haven't you well uh Go check them out. Go check them out. Exclamation mark socials in the chat if you want to get links to all of our social channels. Spoiler alert. They're all ice cream uploads across the board. That's where we are on every single platform. But the lead story is that after speaking out about Activision last week, Jim Ryan said that Sony was frankly disheartened with the state of affairs at Activision with all of the ongoing gender cases that they've got from the DFEH. Anyway... Fast forward to this week, PlayStation is facing a gender discrimination or harassment lawsuit. Oh, how the turntables. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I haven't read through that uh, article. So whilst I am making light of that for the uh, for the segue from last week into this week, um, it's it's serious shit. So we'll go through that. My camera is giving up on live today. I'm here. Stop focusing on the microphone. Focus on me. I know it's a beautiful microphone. The Wave 3 from Elgato, by the way. Nice. GG <laughs> Elgato for the, uh, for the hashtag gifted. But, but uh, yeah, me. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, PlayStation is facing its own gender discrimination and harassment lawsuit. We will kick things off with that. So we're going to start off with a pretty deep discussion, which which is which is always the best way to start off a show. Start off with meaningful stuff and then progress through to things. I mean, at the end of the show, we're going to be talking about free stuff. So it gets it get, gets lighter as we go. Uh, but we'll jump then into a backlash as Halo Infinite Cosmetics has a backlash that is intensifying. 343 says feedback is being heard loud and clear. Uh, rumor has it that it's all Enix on Twitter going, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, if you don't know who Enix is, then that won't mean anything to you. If, if you do, then that still probably don't mean anything to you because we don't know what he says. Anyway, uh, Hello Infinite has had some backlash. That's the second story of the day. We'll then jump into the fact that our next gen base with the spoilers. Thank, th thanks, Ben. Just just steal, steal the uh, stories. Okay, next, the next story will be the fact that Microsoft launches a virtual Xbox 20th anniversary museum. This was actually shared with us by Enix on social media yesterday. We then jump through the fact that Valheim devs are excited for the Steam Deck. Uh, Hypercharge says it's something special. And then we'll finish up with free game f f Wednesday. Not pre-game Friday, free game Wednesday, as Amazon is handing out a nice batch of games uh, with Prime in December. But uh, did you see Jim Ryan's comments last week, Bib, about uh, about the acting uh, situation? Uh, yes, because it was actually one of our headlining uh, topics for a particular day. I can't remember what day it was. Interesting. It was, Interesting. Yeah, so so yeah, if yeah. that wasn't a headlining topic, how would I be able to watch that story back, Bib? Uh, well, you can go to any of our on-demand services, either via YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, google play or itunes listen back to it if you want the audio if you want the video stuff just go over to youtube and you see our beautiful faces each every single week at 10 a.m ish at 4 p.m ish <laughs> <laughs> well after you've seen that video um actually you know you're gonna watch this first so watch this and then you can go see that video but we will follow on from that one tom ivan at vgc has the lead story saying playstation is facing a gender discrimination harassment lawsuit former employee alleges she was dismissed quote soon after complaining about gender bias uh, so a former sony interactive entertainment employee is suing the company for alleged gender discrimination harassment and wrongful termination as spotted by axios former playstation uh, it security uh, do you know what, for a second then I, I read that as playstation it as if it was italy so i it was only when i saw security yeah. analyst afterwards i was like okay she's, she's not italian <laughs> then. Uh, so as spotted by axios former playstation <laughs> it <laughs> security analyst emma M Majo, Mayo, Mayo filed a lawsuit against SIE in, Can uh, in California on November the 22nd. It claims that, quote, Sony tolerates and cultivates. Uh, a <laughs> nice. it, it <laughs> clear For the, those that don't know why I'm laughing, we have a command in the chat, which has been created by Mr. Vivalanco from the 30 plus community. He created uh, an ICU bingo card. Um, and one of those things on that bingo card is mispronouncing someone's surname, which is what I've just done. So <laughs> there you go. Feel free to get involved using that link just there. Anyway, um, in the lawsuit filed against SI in California, in California, it claims that, quote, Sony tolerates and cultivates a work environment that discriminates against female employees uh, who are subjected to continuing unlawful disparate treatment in pay and work opportunities. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go with Mayo, even though it says it's a J. I'm just going to assume it's it's a Dutch 
Jave Y, because I like Mayo. Anyway, Mayo alleges that Sony's discriminatory employment policies, practices, and procedures are not unique or limited to any location. Rather, they apply uniformly and systematically to employees throughout Sony, occurring as a pattern and practice throughout all lo locations. The plaintiff has requested court approval to expand the lawsuit into a class action on behalf of all females employed by SIE in California over the past four years. She claims her superiors blocked any chance of career progression during the half decade she spent at Sony and that she was dismissed earlier this year, quote, soon after... Uh, end quote, submitting a complaint to the company about gender bias. According to Mayo, Sony said her termination was a result of the closure of a department she worked in, but she claims she wasn't even a member of the department in question. After suffering, quote, financial loss as well as non-economic damages, end quote, including extreme and severe mental anguish and emotional distress, uh, distress because of Sony's um, actions, the suit alleges that Mayo and the potential class members are entitled to general compensatory damages in amounts to be proven at trial. Uh, last week, and this is where the context comes in, a Wall Street Journal reported, uh, report alleged that Activision Ble uh, Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick was aware of multiple sexual misconduct allegations at the company and also accused him of personally mistreating several female employees. In response, PlayStation boss Jim Ryan reportedly told SI employees that he was disheartened and frankly stunned to read that the Call of Duty and World of Warcraft publisher has not done enough to address a deep-seated culture of discrimination and harassment. So there we go. That's where that how the turntables reference came in. PlayStation did mention uh, they weren't happy with that, as you would expect, or you would applaud them for saying that last week. In a cruel twist of fate, is it a cruel twist of fate? Is it is it just is it just getting a comeuppance? Either way, PlayStation is now facing a gender discrimination and harassment lawsuit of its own. What are your thoughts, babe? Yeah, well, I mean, this is definitely something that should have been dealt with at the time. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that these they, this will not be the first or the last one of these uh, statements that are going to be coming out and allegations against Sony. Um, it would not surprise me if there's a Microsoft one that comes out in the next day because if you are start if you as a company are throwing shade at somebody else for doing something horrific and you have stuff that you haven't dealt with yourself, I'm fairly certain that it's probably going to come back and bite you on the ass as well. So again, is is it kind of a PlayStation are getting the comeuppance? I don't know. Um, I'm, I wouldn't go as far as to, you know, back up any of these statements. I'm, I don't know the person, the person or the people involved, so that's not for me to say. But if the dirty laundry is being aired out there, you need to make sure that your stuff is in check first before you start throwing shade on everybody else. And I'm speaking on behalf of PlayStation at this point. Like they need to make sure that when they're throwing shade at another a company like Activision Blizzard saying your practices are shit, you need to be doing better. But then internally, they're not doing what they should be doing. Then it's definitely going to come back about you on the ass. And that essentially is what's happening here. Again, I can't take a side on this because I don't know any of this. We're, we're getting second or third hand information at this point. So you can't really throw, or you can't really put any eggs in any baskets. Um, but you can only comment on what you see. And again, PlayStation are now being dragged into something that they're probably, if they didn't comment on the Activision Blizzard stuff, because they get no gain out of this, by the way, PlayStation, by doing that. They're not gonna. They're saying that their practices over there are horrific. What they gonna do about it? We talked about this yesterday. They're never gonna pull Call of Duty from the stores, are they? They're never gonna pull Diablo from the stores. So, I don't. I, I, again, as good as it is for the people who work at Activision Blizzard that are seeing that other companies are backing them, and it gives them an extra incentive to go out and strike and things like that. PlayStation have nothing to gain or lose from what they do apart from now the people who they treated potentially badly are now going to be coming out and firing against them what do you think is the chance i mean do you not even what do you think do you think there is a chance and this is me playing devil's advocate here um obviously on one hand this is someone that has been discriminated against uh, and has been harassed to the point where after half a decade of being held back, they they stood up for themselves. They tried to stand up against discrimination and were effectively booted out of the company. That's, that's obviously what is being alleged here. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a chance that this could be a case of someone has... has seen unfair dismissal after well, which actually turned out to be fair dismissal and has seen um okay this is actually getting a lot of ground uh activision would probably be 
clutching at the chance of settling outside of court with the DFEH stuff just to get rid of it. PlayStation, if they get a sniff of anything coming up, might just take any sort of plea bargains quickly. Could this be a case of someone um, just going, actually, I can, I've got a payday potential here. Do you do you see this potential for this as well? For, this, for the benefit of me not sounding like a complete cunt, <laughs> and I apologise for using the, the C word, uh, but that's genuinely how I would be seen if I if I agree or disagree with this. All I'm going to say is I don't think it's a coincidence that this news article has now been posted now while other companies are fighting against each other because, like you say, PlayStation will want to save face, so I'm not going to say yes or no to that. I'm just going to uh, relay this article back and say, why is this coming out now? Yeah, I think that's... The safest way for me to be able to get around that, that kind of question. That, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I think. I think probably. Obviously, whose word do we take at this point in time? Nobody's, and we shouldn't either. We should take both words with a pinch. PlayStation said, "Yeah, that's bullshit." Um, and this employee, um, I can't remember the name. It was something Mayo. Uh, Emma Mayo. Um, it might not be Mayo. It might be Majo. Majo. Um, whatever um, that person versus PlayStation both fight their corner we don't really know anything uh, uh, in that situation that's what we're waiting for the court case for so obviously take it with a pinch take it with a pinch but it, it it is interesting you will get on one side of the coin copycat cases okay I've seen people earning money off that I would like to earn money off that so um, yes, I will do one of those cases, please. Thank you very much. But yeah, you will also see on the flip side of that is people seeing actually people can be held accountable for years of mistreat uh, mistreatment. So that's inspired me to stand up. So the thing is, you never know. You never know. Um, so all we can do is 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 judge on the information that we have, um, but obviously be prepared to have your judgments overturned when when the courts obviously ultimately prove ish um, how that turns out. So yeah, it's 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 no doubt a difficult situation for Sony. Jim Ryan has come out, and he uh, the, the thing I will say is your knee jerk reaction is to see Jim Ryan coming out and saying something like that last week that they were disheartened with the whole situation, frankly disheartened or whatever it was, um, with, this, with the activism situation. The fact that he's come out and said that, if he felt there was an even a small chance that they were going to be taken to court in the next week, he wouldn't have said anything because him saying it has then made Xbox say something and then made yeah. Nintendo say something. Um, and then if PlayStation are the ones that get pulled up, that's kind of like a big yikes. So you guarantee mm -hmm. he feels from his perspective, there isn't any issues. I know that's kind of par for the course. Usually the, the ones that are the problems and in charge don't see there being any problems. That's kind of the issue. I know it kind of makes itself self-fulfilling prophecy in that sort of sense, but if he thought there was an, even an inkling of this coming, he wouldn't have said something. They wouldn't have made a statement. Not anything to that sort of uh, levels anyway, um, which I suppose is a good sign if we're going to pull anything from it. Just just be aware that even your most trusted source, in this sense, uh, mm -hmm. a digital uh, platform, just, you, you never know. You never know. So not saying there's no smoke without fire. I'm not saying there is fire. I'm not saying there is smoke. All I'm saying is well, it's... I didn't expect Activision to be in the shit situation that they they clearly deserve to be in uh, at this mm -hmm. point. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll wait with bated breath. I I I naturally have a fondness towards PlayStation. I'm sat in front of a PlayStation insert coin jacket for God's sake, so I naturally yeah. have fondness to them. But but uh, yeah, I will give them the benefit of waiting to see. Just 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 like I, I usually hope I would. Um, Next Gen says, this whole situation, can people just stop being shit in general? Just, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> says the quote. Exactly, exactly. And do you know what? The worst thing is, is I can imagine there is a lot of shame and disappointment and disapproval from things and people and brands and places that, that we all care about and love and enjoy over the next few years the stuff that's probably happened that has to come out um there's probably the people that and i'm not not excusing anything that have probably learned their lessons fucking zoom find my face not behind me god damn it um it's probably by the way can you hear next door banging by the way uh it, i might have to mute my mic in between you can I, hear, I don't know what the fuck they're doing next you can door. hear your neighbors banging yeah well uh, it's loud enough it's loud enough 
he's a tiger. Um, <laughs> no, we can't hear that, thankfully. Um, so, so yeah, there's probably more shit to come. Some of the brands that you like and and love, um, not not excusing anything. One thing that this hopefully does is provides all areas of society a chance to step forward and improve and be better. I know, obviously, it's kind of basic human principles to not be a twat, but some people struggle uh, struggle with that. Hopefully, this gets rid of those inbred twatty behaviors and it makes people realize that yeah just because people have done this for 20 years doesn't mean it's it, it shouldn't be acceptable and hopefully that helps and we move on fresh clean slate there'll probably be more shit that comes out that's just if it if it's all the way intrinsically through activision you can imagine it's probably not the only business business of that size surely it can't just be one anyway um hopefully it starts to make people realize that there is accountability there is um other things coming that will stop this sort of stuff happening and then we can all just move forward and be in a happy world together shaking hands high five strangers yeah. in the street jobs are good and nice within social distancing reasons obviously uh, sadly with this stuff having a hefty payout you would get some chance in it for the money just look at Manchester Arena bomb even hours after the bomb went off people were there jumping on the wagon for compensation who weren't even there at the time is that true? that's shocking if it that is. is true wow um yeah, yeah. Are you surprised though? That's the, that's the difference. Are you surprised? I, I'm not, and that's 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 the thing that that kind of causes the internal conflict in me is you don't ever want to say to someone that's 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 claiming to be a victim. I'm using the word claiming there on purpose. Someone that's claiming to be a victim because you you don't know, and you don't want to not believe them. But because of obviously society has proven that not everyone, I mean, that situation exists because not everyone is a nice person. Some people are just dicks. Um, mm -hmm. So you kind of, you want to give, you want to believe the victims naturally, but then you're also thinking, mm, and that's where my internal conflict is. I want to be, want to, I want to be believing. I just don't want to be naive at the same time. And that's where my internal conflict is. Where, where does one stop and the other start? Um, Next Gen Base says, abuse should always be called out. However, the, this doesn't seem to be an abuse situation. It's a shit situation, but there's a big difference in this and, and the act situation. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. This is, this, this isn't um, frat boy uh, ignoring, like there was fucking, I hate to use this word, so I'm going to use it once, but there, there's rape accusations and everything in the Activision one. This is, this is obviously still severe, still sexual uh, discrimination in terms of, I, it, what, does it give details? Basically, women can't progress. Uh, men, men can, women can't. It's bullshit situation. It doesn't go to the extremes as the acty one. But then again, you could always be like, okay, well, uh, how do we know? How do we know? Fighting the other side of the devil's advocate. I mean, is the Activision one probably started somewhere. You don't just go from being in a shitty workplace uh, to being in a lovely workplace to to things like that being accepted so anyway 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 devil's have cut over uh yes yeah, some people are born dicks and one never grow up speaking of which uh welcome in gagad hey uh, i see i see with all of the issues hey how you doing uh next year says uh, the key difference here is that there will be someone at the top who will attempt to fix it activision the people causing it are running the place exactly jim ryan came out last week and and gave Okay, playing devil's advocate, my statement is flawed. I was just about to say, he came, he came out and he gave a message from the top. But then again, Bobby Kotick probably came out and gave messages from the top as well, while simultaneously saying that he wanted people to be killed. So, yeah. <laughs> there is nuances. Thanks. This is a multifaceted argument. Obviously, make your own opinions. Read, get as much information as you can, and take everything with a pinch until you get something factual or a court of law says so, then that's that's the easiest way to go. Uh, once more for the people at the back, by the way, fuck Bobby Kotick, <laughs> says NGP. Nice. Uh, okay, moving ahead. Um, so from one bit of bad news to another, or arguably a very different situation, mind, but this one is written by Wes Yinpool at Eurogamer. It says, as Halo Infinite Cosmetics backlash intensifies, 343 says, quote, feedback is being heard loud and clear. Uh, loud and clear. No, that's nearly something completely different from what I said, uh, end quote. And then, quote, changes will take time. Uh, 343 has told disgruntled Halo Infinite players that changes are coming amid a backlash to its cosmetic system. Halo Infinite launched its free-to-play multiplayer last week and while fans continue to praise its gameplay, they have heavily criticised battle... Uh, they have heavily criticised battle... Oh, there we go. Battle pass progression and the price of cosmetics. The backlash intensified yesterday with the launch of Halo Infinite's... 
<laughs> I can see you fucking laughing. <laughs> That's what you laughing at. Uh, the backlash intensified yesterday with the launch of Halo Infinite's first limited time event, dubbed Fracture Ten. Right, let me hit the launch trailer on that as well. I'll keep it muted. So there is a video playing for those who are watching on Twitch or on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening, um, we may reference it, but we're not playing the audio just in case there's any uh, DMCA stuff in it. Anyway, so this event, which is free to access for all players, contains its own progression track, and it's this progression track and associated cosmetics that have come under fire. Fracture Tenrai features the samurai-inspired Yoroi armor core and other related Yoroi armor pieces. A lot of Halo players want the Yoroi armor and so have troubled themselves with the 30-tier event pass that launched alongside the limited time playlist and event-specific challenges. Progress on the event pass is made by completing the event challenges, which means you can't progress simply by playing the limited time playlist. Once you've completed all available event challenges in a given week, you will have progressed as far as possible until the next Fracture Tenrai event. This means, uh, let me scroll slightly, um, this means progress along this event pass is gated. You can only complete seven event-specific challenges during the first week of the event, which means you can on, uh, you can complete seven tiers of the event pass. 343 said it plans for Fracture Ten Ride to make six total appearances over the course of season, uh, season one, with its next appearance set for January 2022. The way event-specific challenges work also feel, uh, feels miserably, of oh, 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 also feels miserly there we go the event challenges are mixed in with the normal weekly challenges so you have to complete normal weeklies just to access the event challenges you need to complete uh, to progress through the event event pass in brackets still with me i know i'm i'm reading this and i'm getting lost now so if you guys are lost i apologize <laughs> we're all in the same boat together um yeah I'm sure some players will struggle with the event challenges too. Getting a double kill in the 4v4 limited time playlist will no doubt sound like a breeze for some players, but newcomers or lapsed Halo fans may find it nigh on impossible. You can't spend any real world money on uh, tier skips for the Fracture Tenrai event pass, which is a good thing, but by gating progress, 343 is blocking fans from working through the events simply by playing. It feels like 343 is stretching out the event to last the duration of Halo's uh, Infinite's already extended Season 1. Adding to the fury uh, is the fact that 343 um, is selling limited time premium samurai themed cosmetics in the Halo Infinite shop. You need the URI armor core obtained by completing level 5 of the Fracture Tenrai event pass to equip all of this stuff. So the Chon Mage armor set, for example, costs 2,000 credits or £14.39. Fans have a number of problems with this. The price is an obvious concern, but there's also concern that the Fracture Tenrai event pass does not include enough cosmetics to earn. Uh, 16 of the 30 is our XP grant slash challenge swaps, and that the cosmetics it does include will take too long to unlock, all while the shop sells the good stuff for cash. Um, PUBG fan saying, first time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, might, that bit might end up peaking up a bit of an interest. Look, yeah. Uh, do, do you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because yeah. I'm already lost. I'm already lost. I, the gist of it, from what I can see, is they've made it the, so for those that don't know season one of halo infinite should have started at launch which was last week um and then gone till um i think i want to say like let's say january february next year it's actually been extended to like april or may or something like that in yeah. the next year so the season is a good six months because the season's longer the content that was in that season doesn't fit. So people are arguing that they've stretched this out. Rather than playing the game and getting natural progress, they're making you play the game and do specific things that can be quite grindy to unlock the next level of progress. So whereas if you play PUBG's Battle Pass, I mean, this is, I'm actually saying something good about PUBG here. Wow. Um, yeah. If you play the game, you will get XP. If you come in last, you'll get some XP. You come in first and get 100 kills, which is obviously impossible because there's only 99 other players but if you did you'd get a shitload more xp but you'd still get xp nonetheless if you then tick off challenges you get extra xp halos is like you play the game that's great it's irrelevant playing the actual game is irrelevant doing the missions um on the way to, to winning the game that's what counts which which just just is, is bizarre how can playing the game be irrelevant and then making supremely costly, expensive, super-priced skins, uh, and then making them tied to the progression in the game, and then making them better than the game's... <sighs> Lots of flaws. Anyway, babe, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it, 
you kind of you, you did kind of sum it up there. But from my standpoint, is as someone who actually loves playing Halo, like in general, if I take the twenty years that it's been out, I've played a lot of Halo. The last one I didn't play particularly that much online. I've played enough to know that they do have a really good battle pass, or they did previously with the uh, Master Chief Collection. It was a really good battle pass. You kind of tick things off. The, what they needed to do with this one is make sure that it's stuff that's achievable. It's your free to play game. It's your free to play for well, it's your first free to play Halo game. It's just the multiplayer part. If you want people to keep on coming back and riding the wave that you've got at this moment in time and potentially being the best first person shooter that is out there on the market at this moment in time, you've got the biggest streamers in the world still continuing to stream this game. I say continuing, it's been our week, but they are still streaming this game which means that your game is good like they've probably been paid off and their contract ended like three or four days ago they might have fulfilled their 20 hour obligation within two days they don't need to continue to stream your game if your game is still being streamed by those people and they are have i don't know 20 or thirty thousand people each that are watching you stream this game you need to make sure that it's the stuff that's in there is achievable not just make it so that they need to be sat there for eight hours to tick one of the things off because I don't think that is doable for a lot of people. If you're a full-time content creator or someone that has a lot of time on your hands, maybe it is. I'd love to know, oh, Jordan's in the chat. I was just about to say, I'd love to know what Jordan thinks of this because obviously he's one like, <laughs> I think Tito said in the chat when I was playing Skyrim last night, is, is Jordan just fell off the face of the earth? Like, has he imploded with the amount of Halo that he's playing? So he's not I'll just read what Jordan's that's, that's the thing, he's in, he's <laughs> yeah. in space. <laughs> is it Jordan's put nope issue is the fact that you can only play a level to the battle pass through the challenges you get 50 xp per match there is no xp game for kills placements etc challenges are ridiculous as well i had to get 35 melee kills uh the other to get another 10 chopper kills and on the bike uh kills when vehicles don't even spawn then uh, and this is in capital letters we also don't have any specific playlist so if you want to capture the uh, capture five flags challenges then you can't do it unless you get lucky now graham that brings me back to your PUBG stuff. And you you have map-specific achievements. And lo and behold, you can play that and stream that game for seven hours like you have done very recently and get that same map twice in seven hours. That is outrageous. You need the, 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 These games should have filters on. Yeah. If you are a live service, battle pass-orientated game and you have specific challenges to get specific amount of kills or a... I don't know, uh, during a game mode on a particular map, that needs to be available so people can just jump in. If they've got two hours, they may be able to jump in and just c play capture the flag for 30 games to make sure that they end up potentially trying to win 10 of them. Like It, it feels like they've got all the right ideas, but not being able to implement them well. And that is the thing that worries me. The, the gameplay is solid. You can play that game. Uh, Jordan's played 80 hours of it in a week, which I think is pretty tame by his standards. But in general... That is a lot of hours for a video game in seven days. That's that's 12 and a half hours a day, nearly, or maybe 11 hours, 11 and a half hours a day for seven days. That is ridiculous. Yet he's still pissed off that there's challenges that he can't tick off in a timely manner. That's a big problem if you've got a live service free to play game and you're relying on money through a battle pass. Sorry, my then my rant is over. My phone just buzzed then. That's what I was looking at. No, I, I agree. I agree. Um, <laughs> So, uh, a counter to Jordan's comment is Mr. Hulkamania78. Hulk, you little twat, Hulkamania. That's a Twitch, by the way. That's not me just, just greeting him like a dick. Uh, um, we're talking about him actually this sure? morning in, in West's stream. That's why it came to mind, because uh, someone called Hulkamania got killed in one of West's PUBG games. Anyway, the game is outstanding to play, says Mr. Phelps. Uh, my game... Oh, that's Hulkamania, by the way. My game of the year, I bought the Battle Pass, and yes, it's terrible, but the enjoyment of the multiplayer outweighs me chasing visors or suits, which I I do agree with. I do agree with. Mm -hmm. If the game is great, then that's exceptional. But that doesn't last forever and doesn't suit everyone. If people have paid for a battle pass, um, then you kind of you're paying for good content. I get the fact that the, the enjoyment of the game outweighs that for you, but some people that I've paid for the battle pass because whilst I enjoy a good shooter and I, I, I like all that Halo gives me in that sort of sense, I wanted the idea to tick off missions and give me something to do. A lot of people need the little micro missions to keep them chugging forward. That's why a lot of people really like Fortnite versus something like a PUBG because 
the micro missions or even the stretch goals, if you get that far in, give people some, mm-hmm. like gamification on top of the game. For me, jumping in and having a really good game of PUBG is the holy grail. But if I can do that while ticking off something towards my battle pass, then that works. PUBG doesn't have a battle pass right now or a survivor pass, and it's not going to have one for five months. So mm-hmm. Halo has it has it pretty well, if you ask me. I mean, five months. I mean, I suppose actually, if it takes you five months just to unlock one visor for your helmet, is that just as bad? Which one's the <laughs> worst one? Um, but if you're going to have a battle pass, which you need, so Halo being a good multiplayer to play will not give it a, sh- a long shelf life for everyone that's not in today's world that is not enough so something like a battle pass that you can work towards and churn through that is where your long game comes from that is how you keep users engaged that is where marketing tie-ins brand placement endorsements and sponsorships all of that sort of stuff comes into it so if your battle pass is uh, battle pass is crap people aren't going to buy uh, aren't going to pay for it if people hate season 1 um, and they've had this really horrible situation forced down their throats for six mm-hmm. months, they're not going to pay for season two. And if your game is free to play, and the skin... So, okay, people aren't going to... They've got a free-to-play game, but they're not going to put money into a battle pass. Okay, well, we can get money off them from buying cosmetics. Ah, but your cosmetics are linked to your battle pass, which they hate, so they're not going to get the cosmetics from the store. You've just taken all of your revenue op- opportunities away. So I, I agree. The multiplayer being really good, and I've heard that across the board, by the way. I'm not saying it's shit at all, genuinely. I mean, I'm, I'm not. it's not for me. I'm not going to play it. But yeah. from what I can tell from people I know in my like circle of influence, people have influenced me to believe that Halo is a very good game. If you're into Halo, yeah. obviously I'm not, so it's not for me. Um, that said, this is only season one. Call of Duty Warzone is a really good and and really well balanced game in terms of its cosmetic and its battle pass and and being able to get things out of it. Fortnite the same. Um, however. Warzone is well balanced. Blackout had nothing in terms of content. Mm-hmm. So what Blackout got was twelve months of um, uh, of practice session. Where no, what was up, Warzone got was twelve months of practice session with Blackout. Halo doesn't have that. So season one is there. Uh, okay, we've got a gauge where the middle ground is. So whilst it's shit, it's not the end of the world for me. If if they can change stuff on the fly during the season, that's what I want to see happening. I want to see them yeah. going. Okay, this doesn't work. We need to change this. If that's not enough content for the end of the season, we either tell people, okay, we've changed this, which means there's not going to be any content, or we try to rush in some short term content to plug the gaps at the end. Um, mm-hmm. Or be transparent, be honest. By just going, oh shit, we've got no content, so we've just stretched it to make it super hard so that eventually people will get there and they feel like they've earned it, but it'll take them six weeks. And uh, Just be transparent and say, okay, the delay has meant we've got a content gap. We thought this would be a good solution. It evidently looks like it's not a good solution. Why is my camera still looking behind me? <laughs> it's focusing on fucking <laughs> Iron Man behind me. Hey, you need one of them cameras that Ben's got where it just zooms in on the ceiling. And then it just shoots down into his face. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, what they are doing, they're saying that they're listening and they need to tweak this. They've, they've gone out with something that they think maybe the hardcore will... Like, like Jordan said that he's grinded for seven hours yesterday and now he needs to wait till next week for a particular battle, uh, a particular challenge to start again. Like That's what they're probably expecting from everyone, but not everyone has nine hours in a day to be able to grind out a particular challenge. Yeah. So... Yeah, they need to find the balance. Like you said, PUBG has it as easy, medium, and hard for a daily challenge. Like they need to try and implement that just on a wider global spread. But I, d- I disagree with um, Ben, and that, I don't off- do that very often. But the Battle Pass stuff has screwed multiplayer online. I don't think so. I think uh, for me, as I'm using Fortnite as an example because I think they do the Battle Pass pretty much better than everybody else. But they have a Battle Pass in which it's not. Uh, you have level up stuff, but you have punch cards as well. So you have to master an LMG. You might the the the, the end goal might be to have I don't know 500 kills with an LMG, but then you'll have different punch cards for 30 30k XP for getting 250 kills and stuff like that. They have a widespread battle pass. It's not particularly like get into a get 16 kills and then you'll be able to have 30k but like that that isn't what they do they try and make it so that even if you have an hour to play you still have an opportunity to be able to get xp to go towards the wider battle pass which i think is phenomenal like that gives me the reason to be able to because me and you played we talk about the greatest christmas ever when we played um Fortnite the entire two weeks that we was off because we were just addicted to it and just us jumping into you like you will say oh i've got two challenges to tick off we have to 
drop in at a particular location and take out two of the NPCs and then move on to the next place. Like the end goal of the battle, that battle royale wasn't to win the game. It was to tick off your challenges as fast as you could. If you could win the game doing it, brilliant. But the incentive was to drop in and farm four apples or whatever it was. Yeah, like, we need to go to the just... orchard, get get four apples. I'll get two, you get two. Job's good. And then we'll see if we can yeah. get a win. And we've ticked something. We yeah, feel yeah. like we've achieved, even though we're going to get lizard by the first team we come across. But still, we've done something. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, uh, the, the initiative wasn't to win the battle royale, which is kind of counterintuitive to what a battle royale is. But if the if the battle pass has been done perfectly and to uh, and so that you can spend an hour doing it, and then if you have four hours the next day, you go in and you tick off seven or eight of them. But having the ability to have that balance is the best way for a battle pass and it does give me the initiative to go in and continue to play that game if there's no battle pass i'm probably going to have two or three games get bored of it and then go back to playing something yeah. else again like i See, need something to keep me engaged a battle pass i like so i'm, I'm actually in the same boat as bib on this one so so to, to reiterate actually let me jump back up a sec just make sure um uh Game is oh, yeah, I'll jump back up. John says the game is ridicul ridiculously fun though, uh, but they need to fix the progression. I have the URI am, but it took me grinding now. Nine hours yesterday for the challenges. Now I can't get any more progression until the next week. It's on. That is something that bugs me. So you only get like say seven levels, one per day or whatever, seven in a week. Um, let's just say it was that. I don't know what it was. Let's just go with that. Um, and then you have to wait until the next week to get your seven levels. What if you were off to Benidorm for 10 days and that covers that week, so you've lost seven levels? Do you get a chance to get them afterwards? Can you only unlock them in that week? Do your seven days roll over to all the other weeks afterwards? Do you get a chance to get them in the weeks forward? A battle pass should be a case mm -hmm. of, this is my progression, not if I'm live and present at the specific times dictated by that, yeah. uh, so, which is where we get then to... Uh, Ben's comment for NGB says, uh, Battle passes are screwed up multiplayer games, in my honest opinion. I used to play multi -game, uh, multiplayer games stuff religious, uh, religiously, but barely do anymore because of things like this. I actually, yeah, I, I disagree. I, I really like Battle Passes, and I feel like they've made me be more likely to play multiplayer games. Um, but the issue with this is I feel like stuff that should be in the game by default, the grind yeah. stuff, is what you get in the game by default. So anyone that played Call of Duty 4 or whatever, will have been like, I need 150 headshots with a sniper rifle. It's like, I fucking get 150 kills, let alone 150 headshots. What the fuck? So, I mean, I did that for every sniper rifle. Um, and then did it, uh, for one, I think it was the Barrett I did it with. But then when Modern Warfare Remastered came along, I did it for every sniper rifle and got the Regal camo. Super proud about that. I've, I've, just saying, just saying. Um, but that was a full on, yeah, that was a full on grind that was in the game. I didn't pay any extra for that. That was just okay. You're enjoying just going in and shooting, going in and shooting, going in and shooting, going in and shooting, going in and, shooting, going in and repeat a thousand times, a million times. Here's something that you'll tick off that's super difficult, but because you're going to play it for the long haul, is in there anyway. That's free of charge. And if they'd have made me pay for that, I'd have been fuming. It was like, it's always there. So those grind things, those stretch goals are what you get after your content, not as your main course. They're like the extras, the stuff around the edge of the room that you can go and pick off once you've had your three-course meal and you, you drink or whatever, you go, oh, grapes, nice. Oh, some after eight mints. I'll have one of those. Those are, those are the after eights missions. So I, I agree, though. Like, that has kind of ruined multiplayer games but it's not that that's that's a poor imp implementation of a battle pass is what's yeah. ruining multiplayer games in my opinion if you're thinking that, that is your core content then you have not learned with the rest of the industry as to what makes a good battle pass you've gone people like missions that never end <laughs> we like content that fills gaps there we go it's like people don't like missions that never end people like missions that feel like they're worthwhile if it never ends mm. and it's worthwhile then that's wonderful if it if it just, just never ends, then my yeah. God. Um, like the Fortnite one, like you said, it, it might go on for 10 weeks, but you can still go back and do week twos if you're on week eight. If you've missed that week and you're away, it looks like what Jordan's saying is that you can't do that with the Halo one. That is a battle pass that's not been fought through properly. And that's one that definitely, they when they say they are listening to people's feedback, that's absolutely one that they need to take on board. A battle pass shouldn't just be something that's just put into a game so they can make money. It needs to be something that when you are spending money it feels like you're getting your money worth out of it plus it gives you an initiative to where to go back if i've missed a week and i know that i can't when it comes to week seven i can't get what i needed to get i've, I've played all the other six weeks i've missed week two therefore when it comes to week seven what's the point like yeah. what's if, the point if completing you the set? week two <laughs> um 
and you can't do it between those set hours on that week, that's a raid. That's a limited time event, not just Battle Pass content. That is, okay, you have to be online with all your friends at this time to do this stuff. That stuff is what you say for your big events, not just your general content. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the URI armor core is needed for the... Uh, your eye, actually, let me jump back up. Uh, Hulkamania says, to be honest, I didn't realize it was so bad, but I also thought I'm supporting the game. Then it dawned on me how long the grind would be. I've forgotten about chasing stuff and check back if something is unlocked. I did two PUBG Battle Passes and didn't do it again. Never felt worth it. I agree, I agree. Not, uh, PUBG's is, is shocking right now. I and has been for the last two seasons. PUBG used to give you 100 levels of content and you'd get the, the premium track and the free track. Everyone gets what's on the free premium, i.e. Battle Pass users gets what's on the premium, obviously. That's usually how it kind of works. You're used to seeing that sort of stuff in Fortnite and, and, and whatever. Or, or a lot of games now merge them into one track and every fifth one, everyone gets it free. But every one, two, three, four is the premium one. PUBG just went, okay, we're going to go from 100 levels on two tracks to just 70 levels, but the last 20 levels, you only get one thing every five levels, and then it's crap cosmetic shit. So we only really, we've gone from 100 levels, 200 levels to 50 levels, um, and we're keeping the same price, uh, and we're making them last longer. <laughs> Great. Uh, and now they just don't have one five months. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, for example, the Yorai Ar Armor Core is needed for the Yorai Armor Cosmetics that are in the store. So if you don't do the event and buy them from the store, you can't wear them, which is stupid. It's, uh, that's, that's, that's paying for cosmetics and grinding the gameplay are two separate elements. And that's when people are starting to realize and accept that you can... It's like paying for level skips in Fortnite. Some people can afford to do that and will do that great some people can't so therefore grind but that gives them a mission great that's two separate tracks by putting the two together it's you can pay for it and grind for it if not you're not getting it it's like pff, okay um i get it. it's a good thing if you're really into one game but for someone that's dipping out of the games uh, here and there i absolutely cannot spunk eight hours over a weekend into one game see i can i can um especially obviously on a weekend because i'm streaming if, if i stream for four hours ish then that's like couple of hours here and there i can i can split that in quite easily like that so having something like a a pass like i didn't care about the passes in like old school cod days because that was just social playing with the maze particularly now a lot of my stuff is single player because it's the, the effort of trying to get on time uh, online at the same as someone else because if i am playing eight hours a weekend it's not guaranteed i'm going to be on at eight o'clock till ten o'clock it's going to be i might be on at eight but i could jump on at four and be off by six um or whatever so a lot of my stuff is single player now which is where the pass actually turns out to be quite useful for me because it gives me rather than working with my team and getting the stuff that comes with that it's learning to work towards my own goals kind of thing yeah um i like the concept of having other shit to do uh but impl implementation of it so clearly moved towards monetization and it's irritating me 100 100 percent. uh by the way the event is only on for seven weeks total over the six months of the season which is ridiculous six months in putting a battle pass buying a battle pass now and knowing that individual weeks over the next six months i have to be at home every day playing on that game to do the mission for that day or whatever it's just like that's 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 like work that's not entertainment yeah. it's like i need to book in a week job. yeah i'm booking in a week there because i've got i've got overtime at work what's your overtime playing halo fuck okay, okay. i feel the same about fifa that's got kind of why now it's got to a point where i'm not playing it every day and i'm definitely caught i'm falling behind like that feels for you to be able to achieve what you need to achieve you need to be selling coins when you're not playing and i can't be asked finding out what the best is to sell and I at particular times that's that is a full-time job so yeah any game that does that you kind of lose my interest yeah. but it, it does cater to a large audience out there there's a reason why fifa is one of the biggest sports games in the world and it's because people the people are in love with that kind of thing when you're not playing it you can be trading when you trade when you're not trading you'll be playing it so it's just a full circle thing which that's i don't really have an interest in that that's but. lovely i don't like games that live off of fomo um or or enforce uh, your cooperation through other means. A lot of it is FOMO, the fear of missing out. I have to jump on and play because if I don't jump on and play today, I'm going to miss my dailies, which means I'll miss the XP. So I'm not going to get to the end of my battle pass, which means I need to... I mean, I do a lot of jumping on daily to take off my dailies. But from a completionist perspective, I want to achieve level 70 for my own uh, stuff. Not fear of missing out. If I don't do it, okay, fine. Um, then when I do it, I usually do it with two weeks to spare, which means I don't play PUBG for two weeks pretty much or not as, as consistently. Um, but games that have you coming back all the time that needs you coming back that is poor imp implementation of a battle pass again a battle pass should be something you can tick off easily 
over time. Ideally over the course of the season, but if you can put the time in and the hours and tick it off even sooner, that's how it should work. It shouldn't be enforcing you to, as Next Gen Base says, uh, basing everything in your life around a battle pass for a game. That is poor battle, but that's not a battle pass. Yeah. That is sponging. That is money grabbing. Yeah. That is what that is. Anything that forces you to build your entire life around it doesn't care about your mental well-being as a person, as a gamer. It sees you entirely as a customer. And that that mm -hmm. is what it is. It's that's where that's where the breakdown is. Is the difference between being a customer and being part of its community. If you want a re reward and establish a good community, good content, good good games, good good missions, does that forcing them to come back is that's prison, and nobody wants to be in prison. Um, <laughs> uh, da, 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 just take it takes five weeks to earn all of the cosmetics. So if you miss three weeks out of the seven, you can never earn all the rewards, which is bullshit. Miss three weeks, three specific weeks out of the next six months, and you can't get everything. What's the point? Anything that will that will give me um, five weeks or whatever it is, seven weeks over the course of se uh, of six months, I'm not interested in. That is too scattergun to me. I'm not bothered. I am not bothered. But then again, I'm not playing Hiller, so. Um, I need that awesome helmet, but I've got to grind those seven weeks. Well, luckily, they gave the dates on the event page, so I can sort those weeks out. But that's the point, though. Sorting those weeks out. What? <laughs> the what? Um, if, it, if it came to, you got to week, one and you did the week one missions fine if you got to week two and then the week one and two missions are still there okay that's a bit better and then week three you can do one two and three if you missed any of them week four and, and all of the stuff past stuff comes up and that's better still not a fan of it though i don't like it i don't like that at all i mean that's the good thing with the pubg's uh passes you'll get week one two three four five six seven eight or whatever and you if you if there's a weekly mission from week one like there's usually one that's like a curveball that's like find a flare gun and call in a brdm which sometimes you'll do that three times in a day sometimes you won't do it once in three weeks so that being in week one you're like Pfft. but if you don't do it and you find a flare gun in week four well there we go there's my mission Cha ching ticked it off nice um PUBG at least learned that and hasn't got rid of that. Um, TLDR, um, I don't think the concept is for me anymore. I, I like jumping into multiplayer, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not just into basing my life around a particular game that I'll no doubt get smoked in because I'm essentially an octogenarian now. I mean, well, exactly. Um, also, uh, the difference there is that, that, that your whole remit is to not be based around one individual game you are next gen base you're based in the entire next generation if not you would be halo base uh and that mm. that was not that's false advertising so get out me um but that's it for a lot of people life is bigger than one game i was always that person pretty much until i found PUBG. um i mean i still play other games but that's the one that that has an itch that it uncovered an itch that i didn't know that i needed scratching that no other game could scratch for me yet so that's why i keep going back to that but a lot of people don't have that a lot of people just play whatever i'm playing this now i'm playing that now there's a new one there like like this guy right here like he just he plays all the games all the time at once mm. like if he, if he had the ability to play one game with one hand and one eye and another game with another hand another eye one of them would be resident evil and the other one would be something different nice skyrim on the go let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, uh, that could be a nice segue. That's Skyrim on the go. Skyrim on the go. Oof, oof. Okay. Yeah. Well, is, uh, it's, like that, it's like you built that one in purposefully. I don't know. Do we have a Skyrim on the go thing? Oh, okay. Yes. Ish, 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 ish. Valheim on the go? <laughs> well, it, it's the same thing. <laughs> so, yes, as we segue into the next story. I mean, remember I said the words Skyrim on the go, but change it to Valheim on the go. Actually, before <laughs> before I won't segue as, as nicely. Skyrim on the go? I'll go through the uh, the last few comments in the chat. You shouldn't need a Google, Google calendar to play Halo, fuck's sake. Exactly. I do. Hello is my job. Uh, very much the exception to the rule there, mate. Uh, to be fair, I had a Tinder date on Fortnite, and we grinded challenges, and she was showing how to get some of the stuff. Uh, uh, how to get some of the... So, what? She, she was showing how... Okay, it was good. Nice. <laughs> okay, uh, one percent with you on that. I'm not the average consumer now. I want to play all the things all the time. Exactly. Um, so, yes, anyway, jumping into the next story. Games on the go? Nice, anyone? Yep, okay. James Trotton, Trufton. I don't know how you pronounce that one. Game uh, exclamation mark bingo in the chat for anyone that wants to get the uh, card back up. Uh, from the game, it says, Valheim devs are excited for the Steam Deck. Uh, Hyperchard says it's something special. So, indie devs are preparing for the Steam Deck, and it looks to, uh, it looks to be going smoothly. So, Valheim... Valve is launching its own handheld console with the goal of making a, as much of the Steam library portable as possible. But that means developers are having to prepare games to work on a new system. Vam, uh, Valve
Valheim developer Iron Gear is one such studio, bringing its Viking-themed survival sandbox to the deck. Quote, Valheim worked pretty much as is on the Steam Deck without any real issues. Both the Linux version and uh, through Proton, uh, Iron Gear programmer and designer Jonathan Smars told the gamer. Uh, mainly, we are working on a few controller accessibility issues and some font sizes to make sure everything is readable. Given the size, uh, given the Stream Deck is portable, it has a much smaller screen. Access accessibility will be a vital issue. In that regard, as developers, we'll have to work to translate what is designed for larger monitors or TVs to those smaller screens. Valheim is already making that leap. This could be uh, tougher for more PC-oriented titles like strategy simulation games, but we've already seen the likes of Civilization, uh, Civilization on Nintendo Switch, which has a Zoom function. Hopefully, other devs will take note and lean into accessibility as Iron Gate is. Uh, preparing for the Steam Deck's OS is another issue developers are having to tackle, as well as factoring in the unique uh, controller. However, studios with ports for Switch are a step ahead. Valheim currently isn't available on Nintendo's own handheld, but Hypercharge, a game all about action figures and toys coming to life to fight each other, is. Um, we made sure to, to do a proper build of the game, Hypercharge uh, Unboxed told the gamer. We already had support for Nintendo Switch, so features like Gyro and the handheld nature were already set up and working. We also internally had Steam controller support, which means that button prompts had been implemented. Uh, the transition sounds as, uh, as though it'll be smooth, even if it takes a little extra work. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. I don't think we need to go any, any more. Um, Valheim devs are excited for the Steam Deck. Say it's something special. What are your thoughts, Bib? Yeah, I think I think they do, but the biggest thing to come out of this article for me is it's something that I have actually struggled with myself on the Nintendo Switch. It's, my, I, I, my eyesight isn't horrific. It's just not the best. Like, I'm partially, I'm partially blind in one eye. Like... I, I genuinely am like yeah, my my left eye is fucked. I was born with a dodgy eye, and it's not progressively got worse. It's just not as dominant as my right eye. I don't know if like if you used to. Does anybody have a more dominant eye? I know that sounds like a ridiculous question. Probably something that you don't even realize yourself before. But yeah. if you put your hand my, over one my of most your dominant eyes, dominant eye is more like a eye. Is that what you meant? <laughs> if you put no. your hand over one of your eyes and then look through the and then do the same with the other one, is one like partially blurry? Well, that's that is what it's like for me. So having to read something that's quite small on a screen when i know that if i'm playing skyrim for instance on my switch and i put it on the big screen everything's really nice but then when i play something uh when i when i dock it uh, sorry when i play it in handheld mode it's a little bit different the worst one of those was dc universe online on the switch like the text was pretty much unreadable unless you was playing it on the big tv i love the fact that they are not just not just making this playable in terms of playing it on a handheld, they are looking at everything that goes around it, like all the accessibility stuff, um, so that everyone has a chance at being able to play these games without having the experience that they would have on the PC being hindered. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my two pence. <laughs> no, I like this. I like this. I mean, portable handheld gaming, nice. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the accessibility um consideration there be it if you've got one dodgy eye as, as bibby was saying then be it uh, whatever I, I i'm a big fan we've seen huge advancements even was it last week the week before we were talking about um halo having sign language we have um asl yeah. sign language and no, that was Forza sign language sorry yeah Forza. i actually said that in my head what did i actually say out loud halo halo yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah um having asl and bsl american and british sign language um uh, hand what's the word uh, yeah anyway um on screen so you, so people that can read sign language there you go you don't have to read words you've got someone on screen giving you uh the what would be the audio prompts or the text prompts that other people are getting so that nice that obviously is is extra ways to make people enjoy the game even further before you get to that point there's just a general way of some people can't even enjoy a game because particularly uh, with those examples if you've got a strategy game that has a super zoomed out approach and you need to see right into it some people uh particularly on a small screen have no option of being able to see that a lot of people would find it difficult but those with sight uh issues would find it very difficult i'm, I'm a big fan that valve um 
not Val, Valheim devs um, are already working on this. And the fact that they've done this before, working on Switch and other consoles, is great for the industry in general because that means not only will the Steam Deck start off um, on a good foot in terms of accessibility, but it sets a good example at the beginning of that as well. So everyone else sees, like, look, actually, look at what everyone else is doing. We kind of need to make sure we're hitting these levels too. Not only for playability for everyone, but for playability for those that kind of need the extra playability. Yeah. yeah. Like it. Like it. Good to see. Um, jumping back onto Microsoft, this one was mentioned in the chat as well as on social media yesterday. You guys like sharing the news. We love to see it. You help shape our show every day. Uh, and Tom Phillips has this article from Eurogamer. It says, Microsoft launches virtual Xbox 20th anniversary museum. Checked 20 years of stats. Revisit Red Ring of Death crisis. Nice. Uh, so Xbox's 20th anniversary celebrations continued today with the arrival of of uh virtual uh, of a virtual museum from microsoft why is it not showing me this video there we go freaking you're a gamer website i have to scroll down and scroll back up for it to give me a video great <laughs> um so xbox's 20th anniversary celebrations continue today with the arrival of a virtual museum from microsoft in brackets no i refuse to call it a metaverse uh in brackets uh, this browser-based experience is a mix uh, mix of major news stories charting tw xbox's 20-year history 3d objects such as halo's warthog or the skyrim logo and some eye-opening personal stats if you explore while signed into an xbox account the museum is divided into sections for each xbox console where you can browse a 3d timeline of events the Xbox 360 era, for example, has sections on the launch of Xbox Live Arcade, the reveal of Project Natal as Connect, and the infamous Red Ring of Death Crisis, which saw countless consoles conk out in just my house alone. Fuckers. <laughs> um, but perhaps most interesting for long-term Xbox owners is an area dedicated to your own personal stats, which Microsoft has quietly been keeping track of. Want to know when you first switched on your original Xbox? Which game you've played the most over the past 20 years? Which was your very first achievement? Microsoft has a dedicated area for each user, and you can also share it for others to wander around if you so choose. For example, my personal museum here tells me I first signed into Xbox Live on the 28th of September 2010. I actually bought an Xbox 360 with my second Eurogamer paycheck, so that track my first achievement is called Cluster Buster, which is almost certainly something from the packing uh, game Hexic. I can also see my most played game for each year, which is a fascinating look back at the multiplayer modes I was playing back then. 2010's is Red Dead Redemption, 2011 was Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and 2012 was Mass Effect 3. Microsoft celebrate the 20th anniversary of Halo. Uh, we don't need to do other stuff. Nice. Have you checked out the Virtual Museum, babe? I have, yeah, but I'm not necessarily sure it's that accurate. Um, I yeah, I I don't know if it's as accurate as it should be, or I just have a hazy memory. Um, it does say that my that the most played game was FIFA 13. I don't think it was, <laughs> but I, I, who am I to judge? Like, I feel like I played a lot of other games a lot longer than that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's it is pretty cool. Have you have you done yours yet? I haven't. No, I I opened it up yesterday. This is uh, how lazy I am. I opened it up yesterday on my phone, and it was like, "You need to log in." And I was like, Pfft. "I've got those details <laughs> saved somewhere else on a different machine, so I'm going to leave it until I get onto that machine." It wasn't on my phone, so fuck that. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I will good. do it. At, uh, after the scoop so I can figure out what it is. I imagine it's going to be something like Next Gen's put Modern Warfare 2 for me uh, to the shock of nobody at all. It's, I imagine it's probably COD 4 or Modern Warfare 2 for me as well, potentially. Yeah. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I did play a lot of FIFA 13. Um, <clears throat> Pro Clubs was, uh, and I, if you could break down modes, Ultimate Team probably would have been like an hour and Pro Clubs, it's essentially the same as what it is nowadays. Uh, Pro Clubs would have absolutely stormed that one, but FIFA 13, I've played... Like PES 2010, for instance, like I know that was probably the most played game and it hasn't come up in the list. So I, I don't know. That to was back fair, in the PES rankings days. <laughs> I had the same sort of thing on the PlayStation end of year thing. So like the uh, the Spotify wrapped and PlayStation did one last year and it came up and went, your most played game is PUBG. I was like, <laughs> oh, never. And they went, you've played three hours. I was like, today? <laughs> yeah, where's the rest of it? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this morning. <laughs> yeah. God damn! So yeah, so it wouldn't I don't think me. it's necessarily as uh, clean cut as you probably would have expected. Which it's just a fun little gimmick that's just pulls through your account, so it it doesn't surprise me if it's not particularly accurate. But it's fun. It's very fun. It's it's a cool thing that they didn't really need to do. But yeah, it's it, I like it. Does it only track multiplayer stuff? So that, the reason I ask that is because if you're playing offline stuff 
back then, would they have tracked that I logged in and played PES 6 on my Xbox 360? Because I played a fuck ton of PES 6 on my yeah. Xbox 360. But Gary didn't... Clark and it as, as a top one, as PES 6. Okay, I was going to say, because I didn't play online. I, did, I wasn't asked about playing PES 6 online. I had Huddersfield internet, um, and it was shit. So if it was, if it just recorded handshakes um, and stuff like that, then that's fine. Maybe I was online. Actually, no, yeah, I, was, I suppose I would have had a connection for almost all of it. Um, but I was using the Xbox Wi-Fi adapter, and we all know how reliable that stuff was. Oh, super. So, um, so yeah, it tracks everything. Okay, okay, well, that'd be a good then, because it'll probably have some decent stats for me then. I will check mine out. PS6 was my first online football game. I loved it. Same, same first one I played online. Um, I didn't play online on my PS2, um, just because it required big ass wire so fuck that shit mm. so I, when i got the wi-fi adapter on the xbox 360 yes nice um so yeah xbox museum if you haven't seen it this is what it looks like by the way so this is what the uh, uh, the museum looks like it's actually much more usable than on my iphone because it was all swipey and stuff um so yeah there you go i'm not gonna do it now this is this is my actual uh browser you can see it on so you can't see my mouse now you can so that there we go you can hear stuff now happening. Boop, 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 boop. Um, I'm not going to do any of that stuff now, but that's that is what it looks like. You guys can do the same as well. It's it's free, easy to use. Check it out. I'm going to kill it because it's making audio. Nice. Okay. Um, one final story as we get ready to wrap things up for the day, though. Um, oh, by the way, if you do check uh, check out the museum, do let us know. Please tweet us. We want to know uh, on social media, Twitter, ice cream uploads. Instagram as well, but obviously we're a bit more proactive on Twitter because yeah. it's meant for the conversations. Uh, do get involved with us on Twitter at Ice Cream Uploads. Send us either a screenshot or just just let us know what your most played game was from... Uh, does it break it down by generation or does it just give you all time on Xbox? I don't... I think it goes down by generation as well. Okay, well, give, give us the information. As much as you want, as little as you want. The more information you give, the more we can have a conversation. So do let us know. Ask Room Uploads on Twitter. We would love to see it. For now, though, let's finish with some good news. Uh, free Game Wednesday, as Steph Nunley at VG247 has this article that says, Amazon is handing out a nice batch of games with Prime in December. A nice list of titles coming to Prime members in December, just in case you didn't catch it in the title. The tag uh, line says exactly the same thing. Uh, so Amazon Prime gaming titles have been announced for December, and there are quite a few games to to claim for PC. Uh, sadly, this is always the case, but it's just, just the nature of the beast. Surely you're used to it by now. But uh, there's something for everyone on the list too. Driving, shooting, action, adventure, you name it. There's Frostpunk, Football Manager 2021, Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit Remastered, and more. Here's the full list of what Prime members are getting in December. See that? Like that list of three... I don't understand why you'd list out three when you then follow it with a list of like eight. Surely that's like, <laughs> yeah. that's the point. <laughs> so anyway, the full list in alphabetical order is Football Manager 2021, Frostpunk, Journey to the Savage Planet, Mockred, Mockred, uh, Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit Remastered, Spellcaster University, Stubbs the Zombie in Re Rebel Without a Pulse, Tales of Monkey Island Complete Pack, and YouTuber's Life. There will also be a new batch of loot coming for games such as Apex Legends, Battlefield 2042, Fall Guys, Genshin Impact, New World, and Roblox. You still have time to grab November's games, which include Control Ultimate Edition, Dragon Age Inquisition, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Puddle, uh, Puzzle Agent 2, and more. And you can also still grab November loot for Genshin Impact, Rainbow Six Siege, Warframe Paladins, and much more. Just basically, if you're a Prime user, get all your stuff. Even if you've not got a PC, grab it. Grab as much as you can, because then when you get a PC, you've got it. Nice. Also, if you're a Prime user, don't forget that you do get one free Twitch Prime sub, which you could drop on a channel of your choice. Like Ice Cream Uploads, Twitch's number one gaming video podcast. Like, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. It was it was the hard sell. We don't do the hard sell. You can drop the Prime on us. Just, you can drop it wherever. Just use it, because you get one sub every month. It doesn't roll over like any other sub because do you think Prime's going to give out free money to your creators just because you want them to? No, they're going to make you're going to make the creators work for it, make you work to give it to your creators. But if you do have a sub, a Prime sub, drop it on a channel of your choice every month. Do it. You got it. You paid for it. It's free ish. Use it. Um, got a scoot later, boy. It is now actually dark outside. Nice. I'm well ish. Yeah. I'm going to nip outside into the dark too. Um, 
But that is it for today's stream. Just give you a, a reminder of what we've been through. Uh, PlayStation is facing a gender discrimination and harassment lawsuit. Halo Infinite has a cosmetics ba uh, backlash. 343 says the feedback is being heard loud and clear. Uh, Valheim devs are excited for the Steam Deck. They're already working on the games. They're already working on how they can get them to work on a small screen and working on accessibility. And Microsoft has launched uh, the virtual Xbox 20th Anniversary Museum. And then we wrapped it up with some free game chat from Amazon Prime Gaming. Fill yeah. your boots with the freebies. Lovely. Uh, so, yeah, we are done for this. This is not it for the entire day, though. We will be back in just over well, around two hours-ish. I'm going to be jumping on with some PUBG uh, with iLotus UK with a DMR spray. He's got a 6X on. He's going to make you pay. iLotus UK. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do feel free to join us for that. Um, we will be back at half past four again tomorrow with the scoop. Ish. Now we'll Ish. be back, back more 10, 10 a.m. ish tomorrow with the scoop. We're both in the studio tomorrow. Um, there's no personal stuff going on outside the streams tomorrow. So, so it, it, it'll still probably have the ish because, you know, work life and that, but less of an ish today. So do feel free to join us for that. Before that, though, Mr. Bib, is there anything else you would like to add? Yes, again, thank you very much to each and every single one of you that have joined us for today's episode of The Scoop. All the follows, all the subs, and all your comments, we very much appreciate it. But if you want to help shape the next two shows and the remainder of the shows this week, there's two ways that you can do so. First of all, find us on social media. It is at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media pl uh, platforms or get involved with our Discord. If you're watching this on any of our on-demand services, go into the description below. All the links that you require will be listed there for you. But all we need from you is a URL plus your thoughts and impressions. We will then give you our thoughts and impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow? Mr. Graham Day. Uh, tomorrow's show will be at 10 a.m. Ish. As Nietzsche has just dropped in saying, um, is this still 10 a.m. ice up ish? I'm really confused. Um, uh, kind of. Yes. Kind of. Kind of. It is. We didn't start until an hour and 23 minutes ago. There was stuff happening outside the world so yeah we start this we start the stream late. we we did tweet we did tweet we said that okay. the stream's moving till this afternoon so we'll see it then um but yeah you've joined in just to join out as we uh are gonna go we'll be back in about two hours though with some pubg and i will see you there nietzsche absolutely like, guaranteed 100 you're not allowed to be anywhere else unless you've got to be somewhere else and that's mm -hmm. fine. whatever you know that's it though we are going to disappear i will see if there's anyone to drop a raid on they might they might be one of our friends still on we don't usually raid people at half past four so we will see we will see stick around for the raid though because if we do drop a raid on someone you will get extra channel points some sprinkles to spend on the channel for yourself plus you get to make their day <laughs> you win they win everybody wins lovely until then they'll have a lovely evening come back at 6 30 for some PUBG, and remember to steve rusty hey, for us.